with breaking news. We're breaking into your regular programming to bring you an update on the search for Molly Tibbetts. The 20-year-old University of Iowa student disappeared the evening of July 18th. Law enforcement officials in Powasheet County are about to speak. Let's listen in. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kevin Winker. I'm the Director of Investigative Operations for the Iowa Department of Public Safety. And the reason we're here this afternoon is just to um, try and bring everyone up to speed with um, some of the details of the investigative response that we've had in the search for Molly Tibbetts and some of the other things going on. Um, with me today are Sheriff Tom Kriegel from the Powasheet County Sheriff's Office and Special Agent in Charge Randy Thicey from the Omaha Division FBI Office. Um, I would like to start by just making a brief comment and then I will ask the, uh, the Sheriff to come up here. Our hearts go out to the Tibbetts family in the Brooklyn community. Not knowing what has happened to a loved one who has gone missing is a terrible experience and every day without them is more painful. We've appreciated their cooperation during a very difficult time and have assured them our primary focus is in finding Molly. So at this time I would ask Sheriff Kriegel to come up and read a statement that we prepared. Hello everybody, thanks for coming today. Uh, on July 19th, 2018, 20-year-old Molly Tibbetts of Brooklyn, Iowa was reported missing by her family. She was last seen on July 18th at approximately 7.30 p.m. while running the city streets of Brooklyn. Her last known articles of clothing are believed to be dark-colored running shorts, a pink sports top, and running shoes, color unknown. Since July 19th, law enforcement and volunteers have searched tirelessly for Molly. On any given day, uh, upwards of 30 to 40 investigators are working on this case. Thus far, in excess of 200 leads have been followed up on. Searches have been included, have included ground air and the utilization of canines. Investigators continue to work this case aggressively and seek the public's support by contacting the established tip lines if they have information related to Molly's disappearance. And the tip line, the tip line is the quickest way to get information to us uh, to law enforcement is use the following tip lines. Um, there's a dedicated tip line for the investigation that is now 800-452-1111 or 515-223-1400 and there's also a dedicated email to accept tips and that is tips at powashikcosheriff.com um, rewards to Crime Stoppers in Central Iowa is offered a $1,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in the case or the discovery of Molly Tibbetts. The TIP Rural Electric Cooperative in Brooklyn has agreed to match that reward for a total of $2,000. And I'd like to thank the media for helping us get the word out and helping us find Molly Tibbetts. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask Special Agent Charge Randy Thicey to the podium. Thanks, Kevin. I just want to spend a couple minutes and just say I'm very, very proud of all my law enforcement brothers and sisters, how we've, we've come together, everything from interviewing skills to very specialized technical skills. Um, we have some people that um, never met each other and they're working together like they've been 20 year partners to handle this. Um, the amount of resources um, that we're, you know, spending today and we will in the future, I'm just very, very proud and uh, of everybody coming together to work this the way they are. And um, that's what I have to say. So thank you. Thank you, Randy. Just have a, another statement I'd like to read, but um, I would echo what Randy said. Um, we, we view the media as a partner in this investigation and we appreciate everything you're doing. I mean, every evening when I go home, I do see her face on, on the news and it is very much appreciated. And I know the family appreciates that as well. So I'm just gonna proceed on with a, a little statement here. Law enforcement officials and hundreds of others have devoted countless hours to the investigation. The Powasheet County Sheriff's Office has dedicated every available deputy to assist in the investigation and searches. Since being requested by the Sheriff's Office, the D DCI has dedicated many agents and analysts from across the state to help with all aspects of the, of the investigation. The FBI has also committed many agents from a number of their field offices to assist with this investigation and continue to do so. More than a dozen local agencies have also volunteered their time and talent um, to assist with this investigation, which include um, fire and EMS responders as well as members of the community. 
Um, I will say that uh, the investigators um, are, are not wanting um, for, for food or drink. Um, there has been an, a constant outpouring by the community to make sure that our investigators are well fed um, and well hydrated, um, which allows them to focus on their priority, which is to find Molly. As leads continue to come in, they are constantly evaluated, prioritized, and followed up on. Missing person cases can be some of the most difficult and demanding investigations. We've appreciated the assistance from many local, state, and federal agencies, along with the assistance from the public that have provided every resource they can. To date, we have provided every investigative resource that the investigative, the investigative team has asked for. We are not giving up on any possible leads and hope that we can find Molly Tibbetts soon. We understand that people want to know details about the investigation. However, we do not plan to provide findings or conclusions of investigative leads to the public at this time. Likewise, if we evaluate a piece of information and feel its release could lead us to Molly, we would do so. What we do know is Molly Tibbetts was seen jogging on the evening of July 18th while she was in Brooklyn and dog sitting for her boyfriend. She was reported missing when she did not show up for work on July 19th. Investigators are looking at all possible sources of information provided by people and obtained from technology. We have not identified the reason for Molly's disappearance and have not ruled out any possibilities at this point. There are media reports regarding details of this investigation that the DCI has not confirmed. The fact that we do not confirm or deny these details is not an indicator of the truth or falsity. There are a few things that we'll ask the public to do, and number one is if they believe that they have information on the whereabouts of, of Molly or any information that will lead us to believe why she's disappeared, we want them to use the, uh, the phone numbers and the email address that the sheriff mentioned um, a, a little while ago. We would also ask for their continued support of the Tibbetts family. Um, they are going through a difficult time. We are doing everything that we can to keep um, them apprised of our investigative efforts. Um, but as you might expect, they are not hearing a lot of the details that the investigative team is working on anyway. But I can assure you, our focus right now is to find Molly. We need to find Molly so that anything that you can do or anybody in the community can do to help us do that, um, that would be very much appreciated. We plan to conduct another press conference on Friday, August 3rd. Uh, information will be posted on the DPS website regarding the time and location of that press conference. Um, uh, we're, we're hearing from a lot of you in the media um, and a lot of you want to talk to us, but we believe it's time to shift in how we're going to um, address media requests. Um, we, you can call in and, and ask for information, but we are trying to keep our investigators focused on the investigation. So we plan to do regular press briefings um, every few days, so the next one will be Friday. If you have questions, um, I suggest you bring those to the press conference and we will address them then. Um, at this time, I would open it up um, for questions, but just keep in mind, I, I am not in a position today to release any case facts um, or talk about the investigation. I'm here to talk about our response, the efforts that are being taken to find Molly, um, and, and encourage everybody, if they have information or know somebody that has information, to please share that with the investigative team. Director, Kevin, there's one of the basic... talk about the one... timeline. Can you talk a little bit about, I know you can't release specifics, but how important is that? Can you say anything about where she was when she was last seen? Well, I can I can say that we have a timeline that we're confident in, um, and the investigation revol involves many aspects. The timeline is very important, obviously, to us, um, but it's also been very important to us to get to know Molly and understand what's normal for Molly, what's not normal for Molly. Um, I'll hold on a minute. So you have, you have to look at the, uh, the investigation that's coming in and be evaluated as, as the totality of the investigation. Timelines are important. Um, understanding Molly and who she is is important. Understanding who is in the area um, of Brooklyn on the evening of July 18th is important. They are all important. Director, one of the basic facts is where she disappeared from. Some of the family members have indicated that evidence suggests she may have returned home after the run. Do you believe she disappeared on the run or after she returned home? Well, I mean, that's one of those details that, that I'm, I'm not going to discuss today. I, I, as I said, I believe um, we have a good timeline that we're working off of. 
and I'm confident the investigative team is doing everything they can to make sure that that is a solid timeline and is generating the appropriate leads to follow up on. Doesn't that change the response though, knowing where she disappeared from, whether it was on her run, on that route, or on the run? Every, everything is important, absolutely. Um, the question becomes, is it something that I need to be sharing right now as opposed to the investigative team following up on? So absolutely, every detail that we have related to this investigation is important. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. What about the Fitbit? I know you were trying to get data from the Fitbit to see if it provided any clues into her final movements that day. Uh, were you able to get that data and what's the status? Well, um, the status is the same as I just talked about. Um, I'm, I'm not going to discuss the, the, the findings or the conclusions that we have from any testing or anything else that we've done. I can tell you that we are looking at all technology as it relates to Molly um, and we are looking to generate leads based on that technology. Um, we are looking to talk to anybody that's willing to talk to us that has information about Molly. So we, we view both of those as critical. Are you willing to go as far to say you suspect an abduction based on the evidence that you have? I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is um, we don't know where Molly's at right now and um, I am not going to um, draw any conclusions about the circumstances of her disappearance other than it is not consistent with her past. Um, I can tell you that's being looked at. Um, as I said, every piece of technology that we have available to us as it relates to this inv investigation is being looked at. One, one thing you have talked about is that Snapchat that was uh, received by the boyfriend around 10 p.m. Do you know if it was sent at 10 p.m. or just opened by him at 10 p.m.? Again, um, all of the findings of, of the um, leads that we're pursuing um, I am not going to talk about the results of those findings. Um, we believe that those are best kept with the investigative team at this point. And so while I respect the fact that everybody wants to know what happened and everybody wants to know um, what the details of the investigation are, um, you have to respect the fact that our investigators know what's best for Molly at this point in terms of the, having the best probability of finding her. Do you have any persons of interest? We, um, we are pursuing every lead that is available to us. I don't know. Do you think the public is at risk? Um, you know, we, we, don't, we don't have a... Um, we, do, we, we can't tell you why Molly's missing. So that's a difficult question to answer. Um, I would encourage everybody that to just take some standard precautions um, and, and I would encourage everybody to do that in their normal life, not just after, after something like this occurs. I mean, everybody has got, needs to be cognizant of their surroundings. Um, you've heard the expression for years now, if you see something, say something. If you observe suspicious activity, don't be afraid to report it. Um, local law enforcement is our first line of defense and they're, and they're all standing right over there um, for a greater part of Powasheet County. They are not opposed to going out to suspicious activities calls where whether somebody's just alone at night and they hear a noise around their house, they will respond. That's what they get paid to do. I'm, I know the sheriff supports that. I mean, they live, they work in this community. Um, our agents are all living and working in Iowa. We live in the same communities that you live in. So we have a vested in interest in the, in the safety uh, of the people of Iowa. Um, everybody wants to find Molly at this point. We're doing everything we can to make that happen. Since you're running down every lead and you, you talk about aerial, canine, and so forth, what about bodies of water and guns? <coughs> have you had any need to search those? Do you plan to search those? And also, since you're running down every lead, would that also include leads outside the county or outside the state? Um, running down all leads means running down all leads. As far as the tactics or techniques that would be utilized to run down those leads, those are kept at the investigative team level. And those are decisions that they need to make because they are closest to the investigation. It's been almost two weeks. Are you still getting new leads and tips from people? Yes. All are right, searches, folks. Are, are searches actively ongoing or are you just following up on tips at this point? Searches are, are prioritized like any other lead that comes in. If it rises to the level um, that it needs to be done immediately, we will, we will form a search team and we will go out and search immediately. Um, but the investigators and the, and the lead investigators on this case are constantly evaluating the information they have, prioritizing, reprioritizing, and when they need resources, it's our job to provi provide them the resources that they need so that we can find Molly. Thank
Thank you, everyone. You've been watching a live news conference from the Powashik County Sheriff's Office on the, an update on the search for missing 20-year-old Molly Tibbetts from Brooklyn, Iowa. She's been missing now for 13 days. Uh, DCI, or excuse me, DPS Director Kevin Winker there, the last person speaking at the podium, has said that they are pursuing every lead that's available in this case. Uh, he said that um, missing persons cases are the most demanding and difficult investigations that his agency can conduct and does conduct. Uh, they do say they have a timeline that they are very confident in, in Molly's last known uh, whereabouts. He is not releasing any of that information to the public at this time. Uh, Sheriff Powashi County Sheriff uh, Kriegel says that Molly was last seen at 730 while she was on a run July 18th in Brooklyn. She was last seen wearing dark running shorts and a pink sports top. The sheriff says 200 leads have been followed up on at this point. Searches have been conducted from the ground and from the air, and they have used canines to help with those searches. Right now, Crime Stoppers has offered a $1,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in this case and leading to Fine Molly. They've also been matched with a $1,000 reward from TIP Electric. There is a tip line for folks. If you have any information, no matter how small or insignificant you think this may be, the number to call, 800-452-1111. There's another number, 515-223-1400. And there is an email address to which you can email your tips. It's tips at powashikcosheriff.com. We will have more on this developing story coming up later today on KCCI, uh, 8 News at 5 and 6, and of course on our mobile app and on KCCI.com. We now want to return you to programming already in progress.